Hey guys, Empyrean here. This video is sponsored by Opera GX. You've heard about Opera GX on the channel before, and I'm here to tell you about some more features. One of these features is the GX Profiles, which lets you create a custom browser profile that's suited for any activity online. Do you want to stream or not get distracted by notifications? Set up a custom streaming profile. Is your PC not running smoothly anymore? It's fine, set up a potato configuration that uses the least amount of resources possible. Are you up to some uh, stuff? Create a custom profile that clears all your browsing history upon closing. Of course, Opera GX has integrated chat channels and social media channels, WhatsApp, Twitch, Discord, Telegram, Facebook Messenger, all on the sidebar. There's also something called a hot tabs killer, which allows you to identify the most resource draining tabs and close them so it doesn't overburden your PC or laptop. Opera GX is also equipped with the import tool that allows you to quickly import all your settings from your previous browsers, like browsing history, bookmarks, and cookies. If any of this sounds interesting to you, click the link in the description, download the browser, try it out. It supports the channel. And now, enjoy the video. Hello everybody watching on the internet. I'm Empyrean and we're gonna run some more maps. Uh, this time we're gonna go Expedition in my Atlas. Um, the main idea is to juice the pack size of these maps as much as possible. So we're gonna run City Squares, which is a nice open layout. And we have a really dumb tree that takes as many notables as possible and then takes the grand design keystone, which gives you 1% pack size for every notable that you allocated on your tree. However, all the small stuff will have no effect. So the small stuff is just pathing to as many notables as possible. So it took every notable down here that is like within two or three points. We blocked pretty much every league mechanic except harvest and uh, expedition and heist. And then we took stuff that is like kind of good, like a Harbinger, extra Abyss, or extra strong box, extra Essence, whatever. We take Valley of Darkness for more juicy rare monsters, also a challenge, so why not? Two points. And then we take the Expedition nodes, we'll take Blue Altars, and yeah, Grand Design. That's kind of the, the whole point. We're gonna run unID'd maps, half of them, because we're gonna use unidentified pack size sextant, that's 25% pack size. I think I counted 38 notables on the tree. So we're gonna, 38 or 39, so we're gonna get 38 or 39 pack size. I don't know if you can check this info here, but you can just count it, add them up. And then we're gonna run the 25% pack size on the unid maps. And the rest of our maps are just incredibly high pack size. I think the 31 is like lowest, but it's mostly like 38 to 40, 42 even. Uh, we're gonna run Winged Expedition Scarabs. We're gonna run Reflex Sextant, because some of these are Reflect. And 100% uh, increased number of Runic Monsters. We're also gonna juice every Runic Monster with Quant, mostly with a Red Robot. I have some T1 and some T2 quant on the red robots and also some quant on the blue ones and we also have magic pack size sextant because some of the runic monsters are magic i don't know if that works but we're adding that we're not orbing we're not morbing we're gonna rush the bus which is really easy to do on city square because after we rush the bus we can no longer get altars blue altars with boss buff we just kill the boss and then take all the altars that we can looking for quant, and then the last thing we'll do is the expedition in the map. So that's the plan. Of course, the reason we're doing this is so we can gamble a mage blood again. We haven't done that last league, but we've done it the league before, so we wanna do it again. Mage blood and or headhunter, we're gonna use up all the Gwen and stuff. We're gonna get a bunch of logbooks out of this, and then we're gonna probably run all the juicy Gwenon logbooks that we have and then gamble a mage blood. And then we can sell that and craft more cool shit for our character. So that's the plan. Let's go red. Mm hmm. Red is done. Let's go blue. Blue is done. Let's blast it with random projectiles. 
The scout. Exalted arm. What is that? Book. Book. Holy shit. This was a pretty cool one. There's another book. <laughs> oh my god. And the amount of astragali. Not a chance. Wow. <laughs> that was like a... 1x. 2x. Let's take the triple book. Yeah, and how many astragalis? Oh. Another X. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Where's that guy earlier in chat? It's like, I ran 600 maps and I found 1X. Oh, look, guys, the apothecary drops here. Okay, pause. Pause, champ, guys. We have two card gumbas. And one apothecary for one UWU. I'm clicking. We have one card gamba and no apothecary. Okay, farm the corruption essence. They just drop from essences too. There is also a sextant for it. Okay, robot. Oh yeah. Place a portal here. Uh oh. Ooh. Okay. Here we go. Ooh. Spooky. The block dudes. Okay. Damn, that's a lot of stack decks. Okay, other robots and other robots. Perfect. Let's go. What is that? Ooh, okay. I made a big bear, guys. All right, we're going. There we go. That's what I like to see. Yeah, one call of the Brotherhood is enough for the lighting immune. That's cool. Ooh, a perfect score. Okay, no mistakes in that one. Good, uh, good words per minute, too. Yeah. Hell yeah. 104 pack size map that's that's our highest yet i think with already two quant alters 191 quant three quant alters 221 quant okay it's time it's time for some big expeditions how many do i put in two let's go Okay, two apothecaries versus Harvest Craft equals four apothecaries. Huh, that's pretty good. <laughs> what now? I think I keep for now. That is a smart play. Berserk. That ES on hit to work. Okay. Ah. Okay. Berserking. Oh my god. Tanky. Calling. Okay. We have two books at least. That's good. Oh, we haven't even cleared this corner. Uh oh. Three books. Okay. That was a juicy one. Look at that. Three books. Bunch of astragalis. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate this scene. POE main doggo full screen. Alright. Well, guys, say goodbye to POE. Say hello to doggo. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god. Where's my POA? I need to put that in front of the... Here. <laughs> oh my god. Where do I put POA? Here, I guess. Oh, she's looking at POE, look. That's beautiful. Well, um, this is the this is the new hottest POE doggo stream. You can see the screen. No need for picture in picture. True. Look, you can just see my wonder there. Perfect. Wait, I can just do like, um, look, here. That's POE right there. <laughs> So, we finished 48 maps with the uh, Expedition Strat. I'm not gonna do the last two because it would require me to start another, like, elevated sextant rotation. And it, it would just be scuffed. Uh, I'm slowly running out of robots. I would not have it for the last map. Or I would only have one charge in the next map. And, like, uh, I think it's easier if we just do 48 and then... Do the math for that. This is what we got. Here is all the tabs. I have one more map for Ether of Worlds Progress. There we go. Is there anything relevant in here? Let's check the stack deck count. We got a lot of stack decks in this project. We got 273 stack decks. That's cool. How much did we spend? We have run the maps with winged expeditions, which are 22C singles, 25C in bulk. Um, so 48 times 25C, that's 1200 chaos in scarabs. The rest was Sacrifice Fragments, which are literally free. It's like one chaos to ten of these. It's like five chaos on this, and we got it back through the farm. Rolling the maps for Chisel, Alk, and then Valling with pretty high pack size. We also ran Fortune Favors the Brave, minus 150C. Actually, 144 chaos, because we run 48 maps. And then the Sextants. So random pack size sextant, we ran some of those and reflect is pretty much the same. So those are uh, those are cheap. These are the expensive one, the runic monster sextants. 120 C each for those. 12 times 120. That's 14, 40 chaos on the juicy sextant. And then a little bit more on the pack size one. The pack size ones are uh, are really cheap. They're like a base price. So after this, we are down 2,700 chaos. However, we found some logbooks. All of these are at least 70 C right now. Vorana. Ah. There is a 2 gen boss one. That's really good. So this second calculator here is what we get from all of these logbooks. So this is 120C because it has Vorana. These are all Knights of the Sun, which are 70C each. One, two, three, four. We, uh, you can sell more in bulk. Two gens go for 50 plus apparently in bulk. Um, we're just going to go with base price because maybe you don't do a lot. So we made 1740 on logbooks. And so right now we are at negative 1000 chaos. We can close this now. And now we're gonna excellence the leftover tabs and see how much we actually made. Excellence time. Take snapshot 5500 chaos. So plus 5509. That's 4,450 chaos. That's really bad. Or is it? Because we made that over 48 maps. So that is 25.4x. Hmm. Yeah, looks good. 
Okay, so 25.4x over 48 maps. That's half an extra map. That's not bad, but I, I expected more. Of course, you could value the logbooks higher. And of course, if you run them yourself, that's going to be the real juice, which is what we're going to do, at least for the Gwen and stuff. But it seems like this strat is around half an extra map, which we've done before with less investment. Yeah, with this type of investment, I would probably expect more. But the lot of the stuff that you're farming is really hard to value because during this, remember, we also got an insane amount of uh, expedition currency, which doesn't get valued. You can now do a bunch of rock crafts and sell that if, you're, if, you, if you want. You can buy logbooks from Danny G. You can do Tujan gambling, which is literally just pure profit, like sitting there and printing currency. And you can do Gwen and stuff, which, you know, you could get a Mage Blood or a Hunter or a Squire or any of the high value items from Gwen. So with that included, it's way more profit per map. Just on the raw stuff, if you sell everything at base value, um, it is half an X per map or a little bit more. But the expedition currency is not included in this, and that's that's a really big part of the of the value. It took around eight hours to run them, which yeah, times forty eight uh, divided by eight. That's a three point two. 3.1x per hour and that's with a lot of reading full clearing the map before the expedition waiting for all of them to open buffing them with robots all that stuff um not including the expedition currency right so yeah that's what you can expect with the relatively fast build let's do deaths I died 298 times. I'll have a clip where I have the early deaths. I don't remember how many, but we died a lot. We died probably once a map on average, maybe. No, I didn't die every map, but some maps I died more because I, I wanted to full buff every runic monster. So I'm at 270 deaths. Yeah, you should have a cast on death portal on this. You wait for the full explosions. You juice them up like no matter what, pretty much. Don't avoid any rippy mods. The, mo the the maps are also rippy. You're picking up altars, you're making them rippy, and then you're buffing them like with the robots. So, yeah. You're gonna die. I think that was pretty fun. It took way... It, it was way faster than expected. I figured I'll be stuck in these maps reading all these uh, remnant modifiers all the time, but it was actually pretty fast. So... Would recommend. <laughs>